Thank you again, ladies. Monterey is going to stay right there in her seat. Praying a lot for that healing of those legs. And uh, yeah, thank you, Monterey. I God, number one, would surely be me. I thought I could be what I wanted to be. I thought I could build on life's sinking sand. But I can't even walk without you holding my hand. I can't even walk without you holding my hand. The mountains too high and the valleys too wide. Down on my knees I learn to stand. Lord, I can't even walk without you holding my hand. I thought I had done a lot on my own. I thought I could make it all alone. I thought of myself as mighty big man, but I can't even walk without you holding my hand. I can't even walk without you holding my hand. The mountains too high and the valleys too wide. Down on my knees I learn to stand. Lord, I can't even walk without you holding my hand. Lord, I can't even walk without you holding my hand. Again, thank you. Well, I'm going to give you a message on something in the scriptures that I can remember one of our daughters when they were little saying, what'd you, what'd you learn in Sunday school today? We learned about Zacchaeus, what climbed up the tree. In the way she put it, Zacchaeus, what climbed up to the tree. If you'd open your Bibles with me to Luke chapter number 19. Number 19. I think all of us, uh, Sunday, children's Sunday school, bio, BBS, all of those times heard stories about Zacchaeus. So it's interesting as, uh, you know, when I've gone to D.C. and for, our, for both the police ministry and also our national Bible reading marathons that we do there, and I go into the uh, Library of Congress, which I have a, I now have an expired library card there. But uh, as I go in there and I look around, and I told you there's no man more written about than Jesus Christ in the Library of Congress. Um, but also you can find a couple things about Zacchaeus. I, was just, I just stumbled upon those and running into those. And they were written from a, you know, a historical standpoint on some of the things and some of the Jewish writings. And uh, pretty interesting when you when you're study the history of that. I haven't done that in real in depth, just enough to know that he was not a liked guy. <laughs> so... Um, so join me in prayer and we will uh, get started here. Heavenly Father, Lord, as uh, you've laid this message on my heart this morning, I ask, Lord, that, that um, each and every heart would be blessed by the message, that we would see your meaning through your eyes uh, on why you have given us this and memorialized and preserved in your holy word. So, Father, we just thank you now. Uh, open the door of each heart today. And may we say, by, there by the grace of God go I, whether we are saved or here today without Jesus Christ, may we see this to say, there by the grace of God go I. 
In Jesus' name I ask these things, amen. So changed by grace. I've been changed by grace. You've been changed by grace, amen. I have been changed by grace. And that means that, means that God was so kind to me. God loved me so much that he wanted to give us a way to reconnect, amen? I put that in simplified form. He wanted to give us a way to reconnect because you know, we're lost without God. Until, and why are we lost without God? Because of Adam and Eve, which I always say they're walking around with kick-me signs on. And, but that's why. So, but, we, but, but we don't have to be. That becomes our choice once we hear the gospel, once we hear God's plan that John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have what? Everlasting life. Yeah, amen. Amen. And, you know, I said earlier, I'm so glad God protects me from myself. And uh, because no matter, no matter how I stumble, no matter... Uh, what my sin is through the day. And let me tell you, I'm not going to be found a liar because I sin. The Bible says if you, were with, if you say you're without sin, you're a liar and God's not in you. So, so don't think too much of our own selves and what we ought to according to the scripture. But change by grace. It's the grace of God that gave me a change. First thing he changed was my address. <laughs> Amen? Uh, we, you know, and then he's just made change after change over the years and continues to do that. But, but we're, going to look at, um, we're going to look at a change that came over this guy. Um, Jesus entered in and he passed through Jericho. So get the picture of that. He entered in and he passed through Jericho according to, to the scripture. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was the chief among the publicans, and he was rich. And he sought to see Jesus who he was. And he could not for the press because he was little of stature, and he ran before, and he climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up, saw him, and said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste, come down, for today I must abide in thy house. And he made haste, and he came down, and he received him joyfully. And when they saw it, they all murmured, saying that he was gone to be the guest with a man that is a sinner. And Zacchaeus stood. And he said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, half of my goods I have given to the poor, I give to the poor, and if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. And Jesus said unto him, This day is salvation come to this house, for as much as, uh, as much he also is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man come to seek and to save that which was lost. That's the grace right there. You, you hear me preach to you at nauseum that, that I'm going Roman Baptist, John. You hear me preach to you at nauseum that the grace of God isn't a signed permission slip for me to go out and willfully sin in my life, okay? And to use that liberty that I have. My salvation is a liberty. I am not to use my liberty as an occasion to sin. Amen, church? I'm not yet, and if you know Jesus Christ as your Savior, you're not to do that either. That's not the purpose He gave it to us, okay? The reason, it, listen, I've often asked you a question, or I say this to you. Why didn't Jesus just take you to heaven the moment He saved you? Because He wanted you to do His work here on earth. Thy will be done on as it is. Yeah, that's what he wants. he wants. He wants every one of us. And if you're here today with Jesus Christ in your heart, you think there's some exception to the rule that gets you out of that? Bet me, buckwheat. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. You know, you know, if you truly were saved, and you knew, here I go again, the real Jesus, because the scripture tells us what? Paul, Apostle Paul told Corinth, lest I fear you preach another Jesus. It's real easy to do that. So I encourage you to make sure you got the right Jesus. i got to get back on the track. I'm sorry. But Zach here wasn't a good man. Zacchaeus was not a good man. And you know, uh, I looked at the newspaper this morning after we did, had our devotions and we're looking at it and we're talking about it. Do you know your property taxes in this county is going to go up 
yeah, 30 to 35 percent next year. Nice. Huh? Did you just learn that from me? Yeah. If you just now learned that, raise your hand. You feel a little bit of ire inside of you right now? Huh? Huh? 30 to 35 percent? And some may be more. That'll crank you off Sunday morning. Look at it. The articles in this morning's newspaper. Just like you don't like that. What was Zacchaeus Church? He was a publican and a tax collector, and he was not liked. He was a traitor. He was an evil, wicked little man. He was short in stature, but he had the power of the Roman government behind him. You know, it's kind of like Attila the Hun, you know. But, but he was not a likable guy. And you see, the Roman government, when they would take over a city and they would conquer a town, they would get... I'd say they go on the Judas hunt. They would find the one that would betray their own families, their own kinsmen, their own countrymen, their own city people. Because what happened was, historically, these cities, when they would be conquered by the Romans, they would take their commerce and their merchandising underground, so to speak. You know what I mean when I say that? Um, and instead of having a storefront, it's, it's a private garage sale <laughs> type thing, so that they didn't have the they, so they didn't have to pay the taxes, and the money wouldn't be found out, and it would be unknown because they knew that the Roman government wanted their money, and so they would get somebody native to that, that city who had no scruples, and they would say this, John, if I, if I was a Roman and I selected you and I tried to entice you with this, John, all you got to do, you, you know these people. You know where they're at. You know where they're spending their money. You know, you know how to work the underground system. We're going to make you a tax collector. You collect anything over top of what you want to collect and keep it for yourself. That's what the Zacchaeus' role, that's what his job. He betrayed his own family members, his own friends. His, he was a very hated man when you read about Zac and you study Zacchaeus. You might be here this morning and go, you know what? I've been, I have sinned so much in my life and done so many sins and stepped on so many toes and kicked so many shins off. Of course, I do that to you too, right? Step on your toes, kick in your shins. But you may, you may be here today and you say, you know, I've done that all my life. Well, then listen close and watch close because there's hope. Amen. There's hope. You can run into the grace of God today. And the grace of God that you run into is none other than Jesus Christ. That's the true grace of God. The grace of God doesn't go, well, I can do anything I want now. That's not the grace of God. The grace of God is that God loved you so much that he sent his own son to pay for you. Pay for you. But you didn't have to do that. So the Romans, they had that difficulty in collecting the money from the cities that they conquered. So, uh, so uh, they recruited old Zacchaeus, and he would sell out his own countrymen and family. Now, the Jewish... They're, they're called the Mishnah. They, they said that tax collectors were so evil and so loathsome that they should not even be recognized as people. That's how much they hated them and reviled them. So Zac Zacchaeus was very unpopular. So I can just imagine, you all know, I mean, if we go outside and we're, we're on a church function and we're wanting to see something, even when we line up for photographs, who goes in the front? The short people go in the front, right? And we all line up. But you see, with Zacchaeus, oh, no. They're not, going make, they're gonna, they're not making any room for this, this piece of trash. They're just not going to do it. Uh, they're not going to do it at all. I can just see old Zacchaeus getting hip-checked. You know, they're, you know, they're not going to let him up to the front of that crowd. And he's the last, that's the last place he would want to be anyhow because he doesn't want to be standing in front of all these people that he has betrayed and robbed and taken their money over and above what the Romans required and kept it for himself. He was an awful, awful, evil, wicked little guy. And, the, and he also, what was even more cause for the hate is he had the power of the Roman government behind him. Huh? Could you imagine dealing with somebody like that? Hmm? We'd give them a blanket party, amen? 
<laughs> Maybe y'all don't know what a blanket party is. Yeah. So he was unpopular. Very unpopular. So he climbed a tree. Uh, the scripture, let's don't read more into the scripture here. I tell you historical things here, but let's look at this for a second. In verse number two, it said, he sought to see Jesus. What's the rest of that right there? To see who he was. Okay? So we know he didn't know Jesus, right? He wasn't running up there because, man, i got to get up there to see this guy I know that's coming. No, no. What's, what has he obviously done? He's obviously heard things, right? He's obviously heard things. And, and, and he knows he's coming this way, so he's got some intelligence information somehow. Here comes this Jesus. He's coming this way. And now he wants to see who he is. Who is this guy? Who is this guy? Does that sound like a friendly... Did he change on a dime here and decide, oh, I want to see who this so nice man is. I just want to come to know him. No, if anything, I would say his little evil, evil wicked mind was, what's this guy got that I can get? Huh? What, 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 let me learn something to this guy. This is, this is fresh meat in the city and new intelligence. Let me see what I can get that's going to benefit moi. Well, he did get something that benefited him, but it wasn't what he expected, right? And we see here that, 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 that as we continue on, he, the unexpected happened to him. He ran before, climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, did Jesus send him an invitation? Did Jesus tell him, hey, I'm coming your way. I'll look for you in the tree. No, he didn't do any of those kind of things. I want you to understand this about our Savior. What does the scripture say he did? He looked up. Now, is there anybody here foolish enough to think that Jesus didn't already know where Zacchaeus was at? He knew he was up in that tree. That's why he looked up. I don't believe it was some, oh, some accident. No, I don't believe that at all. I believe Jesus, long before he got there, knew, G knew Zacchaeus, because my God's all-knowing. He knew Zacchaeus was sitting up in that tree, and he knew who he was, and he knew all about him. Let me pause for just a second. Hold your spot there in that, in that book, where you're at, and turn over to John uh, chapter number 1 with me. John chapter 1. It's not too far away. Look at verse 43 in chapter 1. The day following, Jesus would go forth into Galilee. You know, I'm a visual guy. I picture him walking into Galilee. And, and he, he went forth into Galilee, and he findeth Philip. Hey, Philip. He, he found Philip, right? Philip didn't find him. And he saith unto him, follow me. Well, Philip findeth Nathanael and saith unto him, we have found him. <laughs> he was all excited. We found him. No, he found him, right? It's, we know how that goes. We just saw it. And Nathaniel said unto him, I'm sorry, Nathaniel said unto him, We have found him of whom Moses and the law and the prophets did write, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. And Nathaniel said unto him, Can there any good thing come out of Nazareth? When I talk to my police friends and I minister to them, I, I, this is one of the passages I like to use because we talk about stereotyping and we talk about profiling. And, 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 and you all know my heart, so I'm not stereotyping anybody, but I'll profile. Stereotyping is bad. Profiling is good. Let me ask you folks, those of you who live in a trailer park here today, what, what's the slang term for people that live in a trailer park? 
See there, you answered the question. I didn't even have to say it. That's stereotyping. Stereotyping is wicked. It's evil. It's judgmental. If I'm on an airplane and, 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 and Martha, not you, Martha, but Martha and Butchie, get on, they're on the plane sitting there, and Martha sees a Middle Eastern guy enter in onto the plane. Oh, Butchie was a terrorist. What'd she do? She stereotyped him. But if he comes onto that plane and he has no luggage, and you hear the, the flight attendant they're called today, I think that's what they're called. Uh, I'm, I try not to be careful to say a stewardess because that's what they used to be called. The flight attendant gets, you can hear him back there going, no, he's just got a one-way ticket. Oh, Middle Eastern, no luggage, one-way ticket, what am I doing? Profiling, okay, does that mean he's guilty? No, but boy, that sure means they're, he's raising the needle, isn't he? He's somebody to watch. He's somebody to look at. He's somebody to talk to and ask questions, right? Before that plane goes airborne. Um, absolutely. So, so, and we see in this verse of scripture that I'm all over the place. I'm kind of schizophrenic this morning, okay? Nathaniel said to him in verse 46, can there any good thing come out of Nazareth? Philip saith unto him, come and see. Come and see. The proof's in the pudding. Jesus saw Nathanael coming to him and saith unto him, Behold, an Israelite in whom there is found no guile. Jesus had a sense of humor, folks. <laughs> but Nathanael saith unto him, Whence knowest me? See, there wasn't a big introduction that went on here. But he called him by his name, and he called him an Israelite, and he gave him a little tongue-in-cheek shot there. And Nathaniel's like, whence thou knowest me? Jesus said, Saul Nathaniel coming to him, and saith unto him, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom is no guile. Nathaniel saith unto him, Whence knowest thou me? Jesus answered and said unto him, Watch this, church, before that Philip called thee. Remember, Philip called him? He says, Bef Before Philip called you. Before Philip called you. When thou was under the fig tree, I saw thee. He even told him where we're setting at when he, he saw him. That's good stuff. I don't care who you are. That's good stuff. You believe Jesus knows where you parked in this parking lot? Hmm? Do you believe Jesus already saw you getting out of your car and walking in here before you even thought to come here and walk in here and get here? I do. I do. Absolutely. Absolutely. But you see, he said, I saw you before Philip came to you, and I saw you sitting under the fig tree. I use all that to simply art articulate and illustrate Christ's ability. He come walking in there. He knew exactly where Zacchaeus was at. He looked up with full purpose. He didn't look up to say, I mean, if you all looked up there and saw Zacchaeus, what would you, if you had a, if you were going to say anything to Zacchaeus, what would you say? Set still while I get my slingshot. No. You'd ask him, what are you doing up there? Jesus didn't enter into that dialogue. He gave him a little command, didn't he? Gave him a little command. I'm going back to that. In Luke chapter 19, verse number 5, When Jesus came to the place, he looked up, he saw him, and he said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must abide in thy house. I sure would like to have been a fly on the wall in that house. To hear that dinner conversation. And the scripture immediately gives us the result of that dinner meeting in Zacchaeus' house in, in verse number 8. Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, what? 
What did he call him? He called him Lord. You know, before all he wanted to do is see who this Jesus was. And now he calls him Lord. Because don't you think for a New York sect that Zacchaeus, when he was up there in that tree, he, you know, we like to, what we like, we like insulation. See, we're all insulated together in God's house together. We're knit together with one heart, I hope, and in one accord. And, and, but see, Zacchaeus, he, he, he had destroyed all that in his life. He destroyed it all in his life. Nobody wanted this guy around him. Nobody. And so, so any yearning he had for friendship and companionship, uh, he had nothing. He had to go into isolation. He was an isolated man. That's why he was sitting up there in that tree. Because he was in isolation. He was in isolation. It's a, it's a very good thing for us to learn and understand because when we have loved ones in their family that have always been insulated by family and suddenly something goes on in their life that they're isolated and they're no longer hanging out with the family. They're no longer, you can't get them in. There's a problem that they are having. Okay? It's not the whole family. It's a problem that they're having. So it's a good idea to pray hard for that person, take a close look at that person, meet with that person, talk with that person, and that's exactly what Jesus did. That's exactly. I've learned so much from Jesus Christ. I was a good detective because I learned tricks from Jesus Christ. I was, I was good at, at handling the bad guys because I was and interviewing them because I went to the school of Jesus Christ. You study the scriptures. Jesus never gave up ground. Why, in the same chapter, in the same book of John, in, in, in the same Bible, you can find when all those, all those, that, those, that brigade of soldiers come out after my Jesus at nighttime, man, they came after him. One guy they're coming after with swords and staves and lanterns and a whole assembly of soldiers for one guy. One guy. And you talk about, you talk about a neat experience that my skin gets goosebumps even when I try to tell you about it. They came to Jesus. Brother Matthew, listen to this, because you, what you do is a type of Christ. They came to Jesus. Bad people coming like for a bad purpose. He got all of his disciples with him. What did Jesus do? Whom Seekest thou? He asked the first question. He took control of the conversation. They said, Jesus of Nazareth. And he stepped forward. Where did Jesus put himself now? Between the bad guys and the good guys. Think about that. He stepped forward. He took ground. He didn't back up and say, boys, back up, boys, back up, boys, back up. Stay there, boys. I am he. They weren't coming to worship Jesus, but the scripture says the moment he said, I am he. What did he just show off? Deity. His deity. The only deity. The scripture said they fell back. Ground. They didn't fall backwards on the ground to worship Jesus. They fell backwards, backwards on the ground because they had no other choice. Because as soon as he said, I am, he, down they went. Now, if it's not cool to have that Jesus in you and to be in that Jesus, you're missing something big in your lifetime. Something big in your lifetime. And, and I told Matt, pay attention to this because that's exactly the kind of office because Romans 13 says that he's a minister of God to thee for good. He doesn't bear the sword in vain, okay? He says, he says that they are there. They are ministers of God to thee for good. What do they do when they get a call? They run to it. They don't give up ground. They run to it. And, why, and who do they separate from? The good and the evil. That's why they're called ministers of God to thee for good. In Romans chapter 13, verse number 4, we'll read 1 through 7. It gives you a better overall context and picture. Jesus knew that man was in that tree. Zacchaeus, he was commanded by Jesus. You know what? If Jesus walks up to you, 
and utters a command, what do you think is going to happen? You're going to do it. It's going to come true to him. Okay, it may not be what you were looking for, but if he comes up and issues a command, if he sent forth an edict from heaven and the, sitting at the right hand of the Father yesterday when President Trump was getting ready to start a speech just into that speech, okay, send him. You see, Matthew 18 tells me I'm a child of Christ. And he tells me and assures me that my angels, amen, more than one, do see my Father's face in heaven. You see, if you're here without Christ today, you don't have that. But everybody here has got Christ today. Man, you've got angels that see your Father's face in heaven. How did, I, how did I skip? How did I get out of that? How did I get out of that? Why did he turn his head like this when he turned his head like that? God things, amen? God things. I'm all over the map. But I'd like to have been a fly on the wall at that dinner meeting. And we see the result of it. We see that he goes on, he says, Zacchaeus stood in verse number 8, said to the Lord, Behold, Lord, half of my goods I give to the poor. How much is half? What percentage? 50%. And if I've taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him how many times? Fourfold. Fourfold. That came out of this little evil, wicked, sawed off, slimy man's heart. He came down out of that tree because he didn't have a choice when God, when Jesus said, Come down. He couldn't have fought that if his life depended on it. Because he was coming down. One way or another, he was coming down. He's going to repay four times. And then he's going to pay 50% of everything he's got. You know, that goes way beyond the Levitical priesthood requirements of the Old Testament. Is what, and that's what they observed in the time that this took place. I mean, only four times was required if you stole someone's cow. And there's nothing in the Levitical law about restoring 50%. That was, you know, that was apparently an offering on top of a tithe, right? And not only that, but Zacchaeus appears to be uh, what, I would, what I would like to say is giddy with generosity. I'm going I'm to repay four times, and I'm going to give 50% of all my sin. What happened to him? Well, he called Jesus... I hope you call Jesus Lord in your life. I hope you know him well enough to call him Lord in your life. Don't be a Matthew 7, 21 Christian. Uh-oh, it's, it's, it's a minute after 12. Don't be a Matthew 7, 21 Christian that I, that I preach against. I preach against. Don't say I'm a Christian when you're not. Christian means to be Christ-like, yes. Don't say, don't say, uh, oh yeah, I, I, I uttered this prayer one day and, and, and the preacher told me to raise my hand if I, uttered, if I repeated after him and uttered this prayer and I got saved. Really? Well, tell me about the Holy Spirit that dwells in you. Huh? Tell me about the Holy Spirit you're sealed by till the day of redemption. Huh? Tell me, tell me about that Holy Spirit within you that Jesus gave you once you got saved because, because he justified you just as though you had never sinned. His blood covers you now, and, the, and he gives you the Holy Spirit that indwells in you, and the Holy Spirit that indwells you constrains you. Remember Jesus? He constrained his disciples. Get in the boat. Well, the Holy Spirit constrains me too. Do what this says. And then, then, then the Holy Spirit restrains me. I want to knock that guy's block off. No, you're not. <laughs> no, you're not. No, you're not. And then the Holy Spirit convicts me. Every time I transgress against the Word of God, the Holy Spirit convicts me. That's how I know I'm saved. That's how I know I have the Holy Spirit in me. Because I feel like Adam. i got to... I gotta run, I gotta hide, I don't like this feeling. It's time for a shower. I gotta be washed by the water of the word of God. I need to confess and I need to repent of this sin, and he's sure to forgive me, amen. It's then it's gone. Then it's gone. 
So what do you suppose caused the change? He went from a man that sold his soul to the God of money to a man that's kind of euphoric about giving things away. Jesus called him down from that tree, folks, when everybody else shut him out. He had not a friend, not a true friend. You might be in this world today. You know what? You might, have, you might be lost without Christ. This is the first time you've ever heard this message about Christ. This is the first time you ever heard that God loved you. Your creator loved you so much that, that he wanted to reconnect with you. And he wanted to make a way that no matter what your sin is, you would be perfect in the eyes of God. He wanted to trade the righteousness of God for your filthy rags. Maybe you've never heard these things. But believe me, they're true. They're factual. And they're factual. What do you suppose caused the change? He didn't have a friend. But now he does, doesn't he? Amen. You see, sharing a meal with somebody back then, and even today, to a certain extent, is a sign of acceptance. Or even of close fellowship. I want to be a friend of yours. I want a fellowship with you. Sharing a meal. It meant that you were embracing them. It meant it, it, the Jewish leaders understandably objected to this guy. How many of you honestly don't answer this just for thought purposes. Would invite Zacchaeus to your house for lunch. Only if you had ulterior motives. <laughs> but we are to be Christ like, and that's exactly who we are to go after. Remember that push ministry? Huh? Putting urgency in saving those that are hellbound. Zacchaeus, well, Zacchaeus, he was hellbound. Jesus produced something. I mean, in verse number five, we see Jesus came to the place. He looked up, saw him, said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste, come down for today. I must abide in thy house. And he made haste, and he came down and received him joyfully. And when they saw it, they all murmured, saying that he was gone to be a guest with a man that is, be, that is a sinner. Now they just passed some judgment on Jesus, didn't they? But we're supposed to be Christ-like and do just those things. Jesus produced something in, in that time period, folks, that the Jewish law was unable to produce. Just couldn't do it. Just couldn't do it. He looked at a little guy so full of sin, so full of betrayal, so full of unbelief. He saw a very, very bad person in that tree. A very bad person in that tree. A despised individual, somebody who is outcast, in isolation, and rightly so. And he gave him an invitation of acceptance. Let me reiterate John 3.16 for you today. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever, hear that whosoever? I don't care what you've done in your life today. I don't care what you know that nobody else other than you and God know, and you think he'll never accept me. He gave this man an invitation. And he's going to give you the same invitation today, the exact same invitation to come down out of your tree. It's okay. You got a friend in me. It's okay. I will accept you. All you got to do is believe that I am who I am. And I did what I did because you are the whosoever and I am your maker. Amen. Amen. Yes, yeah, yeah. That experience changed Zacchaeus forever. And God wants people who overflow with joy in serving him through Jesus. You see what Zac happened to old Zacchaeus? And like him, we will not be transformed by a command of Jesus, but by an experience with Jesus. He wasn't transformed by Jesus telling him to come down out of that tree. 
he was transformed by having an experience with Jesus Christ. You too can do that today. Why was he up that tree? Because he was despised and he was rejected. He was not accepted. And there was no room for him in society or any other peer group. I'm going to tell you something, folks. Jesus, the Son of God, God in the flesh, he would end his ministry here on earth despised, rejected, and hung on a tree. He had a little taste of what Zacchaeus was living, didn't he? And if anybody knows the sorrow, the loneliness, and the anguish that you might be experiencing, it is that self-same Jesus Christ today. He called Zacchaeus from a place of shame into a place of honor and reward, and then he took his place. Stand with me during this time of invitation as our song leader comes. He called him from that place in his life, brought him down out of a tree, and then took his place on that tree. He did that for me a long, long time ago. Have I ever been perfect since then? Absolutely not. Am I perfect in God's eyes? Sure am. He looks at me and sees the blood of his son, Jesus Christ. He doesn't see the foul ups and the trips of Bob Burgess. I'm thankful for that. I started off this morning at Sunday school. I'm so thankful that Jesus saved me from me. Amen? Amen. If you're thankful, maybe you want to rededicate your life to the Lord. You just want to come to this altar and pray. You want to, see, you want to come down out of that tree. You're not going to be ashamed. I'm going to step forward. I'm going to let everybody know. I, they, that doesn't matter. I'm going to let Jesus know I'm not ashamed of him by doing so. If you want to come forward this morning and just rededicate your life, maybe you're here today and you say, you know what? I've never heard this message about Jesus. I want this Jesus. You come. We'll take a Bible. We'll kneel down with you. We will lead you to Jesus through the Word of God. But like leading a horse to water, you got to drink it. I can't do that for you, and neither can anyone else. Whatever your need is today as we sing. 394. 394. I surrender all.